Greetings, everybody, and welcome to this DVD collection overview of none other than the Batman. That's right. Um, so, yeah, what can I say? Um, well, I'd say probably my best thing about Batman is that this is probably the first superhero that um, I ever kind of basically really got attached to. Uh, ever since I was about three years old, I've absolutely loved watching the 1966 movie uh, because I remember when I was little, um, there was a video store called Mr. Video. And if anybody of you out there remember that store, um, I vaguely do. I really wish Stupid Me had taken photos way back in the day. But hey, you know, if this stuff had existed 30 years ago, I probably would have. But... Obviously, it didn't. So, yeah. So, what can I say? Um, you know, obviously, you know, the, Adam West had a major influence on me for the uh, character of Batman. But, of course, I remember my dad taking me to see the 1989 Batman film. I was only four years old when it came out. And, sure, I didn't really understand what was going on and whatnot. I just wanted to see Batman beat up bad guys. I mean, come on. That was the only, thing really, you know, the real reason I really wanted to see the movie. And, um, let's just say, from what I can vaguely remember, um, I was absolutely blown away. And it just became one of my, uh, favorite, favorite movies, literally, period, of my life. That is, it, you will never change my mind. 1989 Batman is probably the most perfect Batman movie that is out there. That as far as portrays the character, uh, as far as the darkness goes, um, yes, by now the story is, you know, it's a little, little weak here and there, but you know, that's just due to time and, you know, but you know, what can I say? Um, you know, after 30 years of waiting, um, I'm finally getting to see my favorite actor who portrayed Batman, Return to the screen with the upcoming Flash movie that comes out in June of this year. Um, so yeah, I figured, hey, you know what? Why not do a big old Bat Collection overview? That's right. I'm going to talk about every single Batman film that I have. I know I have done one on the 2022 uh, movie that came out with Robert Pattinson, but uh, I figured, hey, it... It was okay. I didn't really like the lighting of it and everything. And I'm like, you know what? It needs to be a bit of a redo because I think I have more to say on it. Um, so, yeah. So, with that, um, let's get into the Bat Media here on the Media Files. Alrighty. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed that intro. Um, well, I was originally going to talk about uh, the serials and the uh, original Batman movie, but I can't seem to find them at that point. But uh, they will be uploaded uh, at some point uh, with the Batmania stuff. Figured I was going to go in chronological order, but I'm like, well, you know what? Let's just go ahead and just do what I have right here. Basically, I figured, hey, when I talk about basically every Batman, you know, DVD, Blu-ray that I have, figured making a big old huge Bat Collection overview that specifically has Batman as the lead character and not as a side character. So I figured, hey, let's just start off with things right. Let's start off with the original set of live action films, the motion picture anthology from 1989 to 1997. So what's actually kind of cool about it is that if you turn it sideways, it almost looks like a uh, utility belt. And uh, these are all, all these are the special editions and are just absolutely loaded with extras. But we'll get to that here in a little bit. So this just pops right off. And let's just start off with film number one entitled... Batman. That's right. Oh boy, where to start with this movie? Where to start? Well, first of all, let's just talk about uh, the logo. First of all, that right there, that's all the poster art you needed. And that's all that they used. On June 23rd, 1989, Tim Burton's Batman was 
unleashed upon the world, and everybody went bat crazy. Not only that, they even went a little Joker crazy. Yeah, right there. So, with this movie, where to begin? Well, obviously, uh, you know, what can we say? Um, everybody thought Michael Keaton was going to be terrible as Batman because he was known for doing a lot of comedy movies such as Mr. Mom and Johnny Dangerously. And sure enough, um, all it took was one tiny little trailer to change everybody's minds. And um, at the time, a bunch of movie theaters were getting phone calls saying, hey, what movie is the Batman trailer attached to? They would let them know. People would buy tickets for that particular movie, watch the trailer, and then leave. Yep. So then, once June 23rd came along, um, wow. Let's just say, here we are. We start out in literally total darkness. Yellow font. Warner Brothers Pictures presents a John Peters production of a Tim Burton film. As those credits keep going, you hear this very soft, you know, horns and um, xylophones and low drums. And tension keeps building and building and building. And then you have Batman that appears on the screen in big, huge yellow letters. Danny Elfman's theme kicks into gear as you're watching all the credits go throughout the entire bat symbol. So then we wake up, not really wake up, but we uh, fade into uh, uh, Burton's version of Gotham City, which was designed by none other than um, Peter Gruber. Um, wow, such an amazing, amazing design. And I really hope, uh, you know, that someday, you know, it would be so cool to actually have visited that set way back in the day. But, you know, I mean, I tell you what, though, if it wasn't for this, for his set design, we wouldn't be where we're at now. But what's so cool is that it doesn't take long for Batman to show up because that's what everybody's waiting for. He shows up behind two guys, black bat silhouette behind him. And sure enough, um, you know, one of the guys gets a slight upper hand on him, shoots him in, the, uh, you know, right here in the chest plate. And sure enough, he's down for about two seconds, gets right back up, takes out the bad guys, holds one guy over a ledge and says, I want to tell you all your friends about me. Who are you? I'm Batman. That right there, most iconic line of any Batman film ever made. And, you know, what can I say? That basically put Michael Keaton on the map to basically being the best Batman ever. Ever. That's right. So, anyway. Um, so, that, then uh, Joker shows up, played by none other than Jack Nicholson. I mean, what can I say? His casting as the Joker is superb. I mean, you know, just... You know, what can I say? His... His performance, and not only that, though, um, there is, you know, you just get this this really dark and creepy, you know, performance, but also kind of a very comedic performance, you know, throughout the movie. And, you know, then you also have Kim Basinger, who stars as the uh, journalist Vicki Vale. She's kind of, you know, the love interest a little bit for uh, Bruce, but, uh, you know... As, as she's basically just one of those type of characters where she's basically in the, all the wrong places, basically. That's pretty much a lot of superhero heroines usually are. <laughs> but, so, with that, though, we also have to talk about none other than Lando Calrissian himself, Billy D. Williams, starring as Harvey Dent. Yeah, so with this... Um, uh, Billy D. Williams was supposed to, he played Harvey Dent in the movie and actually was supposed to become Two-Face by, uh, the third movie, which Michael Keaton was going to do. But unfortunately, his, um, uh, role basically just came down to just this one movie. And, um, I tell you what though, it's a really, really good performance of him and something a little different than what he's used to doing. 
But, you know, what can I say? He's a really good supporting character, and, you know, I mean, it's it's Lando. But not only that, though, we also have to talk about, uh, you know, Michael Goff as probably the coolest version of Alfred that probably there ever will be. But not only that, though, the merchandising trailer that they put on the original VHS. I have it somewhere. I don't know where it is. But the Diet Coke commercial that they made specifically for uh, this movie as an advertisement, that is probably the coolest thing that I'll ever see that actor do as Alfred because he asked for a Diet Coke. Batman shows up and he brings it and he has Alfred there with a little Diet Coke with a little bat cape on the back of it. I love that commercial. I really wish that was attached to this thing before it even started as well as the Looney Tube commercial that shows up beforehand just like the VHS. Who knows, maybe I'll do my own VHS rip and uh, just throw it in here with this as a keepsake. So, um, yeah, so now, uh, let's just, what else do we talk about? The Batmobile, right? I mean, come on, we can't talk about Batman without, you know, his gadgetry. That Batmobile, when you see it for the first time, it is so badass, so iconic, that literally every guy who is a Bat nerd wants one. I want one, but I can't afford it. Yeah, it costs like almost $700,000. I mean, just for the engine alone. That's just for the afterburner, from what is probably the cheapest thing out there, which I seriously doubt it is. I'm probably just BSing numbers. But yeah, it's. I know there are some fans out there that do have uh, their own replica versions of it out there. But, you know, let's just say I know there is one in a... Um, in a car museum in, I believe it's Gatlinburg, uh, Tennessee, and hopefully one day I will get to sit in that Batmobile. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so the Batmobile, that thing is completely cool. Like, everybody, uh, everybody, their dad wants one because it has those little bat symbols, the Gatling guns that come out of the top of it, the afterburner alone. But not only that, though, which any open score kicks in when you first see this. Oh, his score is so, so amazingly good. So good, as a matter of fact, that uh, he was basically the the go-to guy for superhero scores at that time, especially in the very early 90s. Yeah. Um, but also, one thing that I have noticed after watching this movie after so many years, there's just this one little sequence that just completely baffled me that I was like I was not aware that that was even on the suit uh, so there is a scene kind of somewhat towards the middle ending of the film when um, Alfred is there attending to the bat suit that's in that huge vault you know and you see the, the suit there and and everything and one thing I noticed after watching it on, um, on the blu-ray was um I thought maybe it was like a light or something that was kind of coming down off of like the bat cave or something like that, but um, it is not. I'm wondering if that is um, the suit that he was wearing when he got shot when you see him in the opening film, because if you look carefully in the lower like portion of his suit, like right here, you can tell that the suit is damaged. Like he has a damaged bat suit hanging up there. And I'm like, there's no way. But uh, and then, you know, they mentioned in the later movies that he's wearing Kevlar armor. And sure enough, he there is armor underneath the rub uh, underneath the rubber suit there. And that wasn't even mentioned in the original in this movie at all. That that was that's what that was. I'm like, that is really weird. And uh, if you don't believe me, Google it. I kid you not, Google it, and you will see that there is a damaged bat suit hanging up in that big vault. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, whoa, talk about something that you don't see after watching it after so many years. Thanks, high def. <laughs> but, so, but I tell you what, though, but the fight scenes of this movie are pretty good. You know, sure, they're pretty tame to what we're accustomed to in today. You know, having long, drawn-out fight scenes with shaky cams and stuff like that. But I tell you what, though, the one fight scene I wish was a little bit 
more choreographed and brightened up just a little bit, in my opinion, is the fight when he's uh with the guy that's up there inside the church tower when he's taking on the one dude where basically he's just throwing everything at him and you know, you're like, Man, that guy actually is stronger than Batman and it's actually kinda interesting seeing that here he is, he takes out basically everybody, you know, like that, except for just this one goon who's just like, I'm just gonna beat him up. And then sure enough, you have that in fight scene with Joker. It's not really a fight, obviously, but you know, come on, it's just comedic, you know, when he tell when he tries to punch him and he's just like, Oh <laughs> I mean, you know, it's just you know, I mean that movie it's so perfect in what it is for its day. Um, I know there are some issues with it nowadays, especially since it's been transferred to, you know, Blu ray and to four K. Um you know, but what can I say? You know, that's kind of how things were in the late 80s, you know, early 90s. Because, you know, obviously we didn't have computer technology as advanced as we do today. But um, there is a fan edit out there where somebody has gone through and have fixed all of the issues that are with the 4K edition of this movie. Um, you can check it out on YouTube. Um, I cannot remember the name of the... Uh, YouTube channel, but um, I will provide a link down there in the, in the description for it, and you can see all exactly what they have fixed. And it's actually kind of interesting of the things that, you know, Warner Brothers should have fixed for, you know, you know, 4K and whatnot, and they didn't. And luckily for us fans who look out for that type of stuff, us fans know what to do. <laughs> so, yeah. So, with this, um, like I said, this is loaded with extras. So let's go through all the goodies, shall we? So first of all, um, every single DVD in this set is two discs. So you have on the first disc, you've got obviously the Joker with Batman and Vicky Vale and the awesome badass Batmobile. And then of course you got that classic scene up in the cathedral where Batman grabs a hold of the Joker and, you know, says he's going to kill him. And sure enough, he basically says, um, you idiot, you made me remember. And then, of course, you know, I love it when he does this, that whole thing where with his head, he goes, and don't think that I didn't try. <laughs> I mean, come on. I always get a laugh at that. I mean, you know, that's just awesome. So anyway, so for the first, um, uh, uh, on the first disc, uh, all you get uh, really is just uh, the commentary from director Tim Burton. But on the second disc, this puppy is loaded, like I just said. So you have On the Set with Bob Kane, Legends of the Dark Knight, The History of Batman, the Batman comic book saga as reinvented and reinterpreted for nearly over for over nearly seven decades. Yeah, basically it's a look at how Batman, the character of Batman has basically been reinvented over time, basically back when its origins were, when Bob Kane and Bill Finger had created the character, all the way up to about, I'd say about the early 2000s, give or take. Then we have The Shadows of the Bat, the cinematic saga of the Dark Knight parts one through three. The Road to Gotham, the Gathering the Storm, and The Legend Reborn. So each of those subtitles, that's the name of each part throughout the Shadows of the Bat uh, documentary uh, series. There's actually six parts to it. And up next, we have the Beyond Batman Documentary Gallery. Visualizing Gotham, the production design of Batman, building the Batmobile. Those wonderful toys. The props and gadgets of Batman, Designing the bat suit from Jack to the Joker. And probably my favorite thing on here, Nocturnal Overturns, the music of Batman. That's right. Danny often talks about how he created the score and how it became one of the most iconic scores he'll probably ever do. Also, we have music videos by Prince. Yes, I love the soundtrack to that. Uh, for the music videos, we have Bat Dance, Party Man, and Scandalous. Also, there are, is the Heroes and the Villains Profile Galleries, which are little short uh, featurettes basically on several of the characters that are in, you know, each movie. 
And also, there is the Batman, the complete Robin storyboard sequence. Yes, Robin originally was supposed to show up at the end of the movie. It was storyboarded, but they never shot anything. So, thank God they did not, you know, put Robin in this movie because, you know, yes, he was in the 60s movie, but come on. This is all about Batman here. We don't need Robin yet. But, so with that, this movie basically just, you know, just blew everybody away. Oh, and I had mentioned earlier that the uh, production design was by Peter Gruber. No, he's one of the producers. I meant to say Anton first. Yes, if it wasn't for him, uh, this movie would not have been made. So, anyway, that's a side note. So, yeah, um, i tell you what, though. Uh, you know, the movie goes by for about, it's like two hours. Basically two hours and six minutes. So, yeah. So, with that... That basically completes our first part of the Batman motion picture anthology series. Keep it up next here for part two as we go into Tim Burton's second film entitled Batman Returns. Coming soon to a Bat channel near you. So remember to please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next Bat review.